Each year, the Distinguished Service Award honors an individual's outstanding service to his or her community. I am privileged to introduce SIUE alumna Paige St. John. Will you please come forward? As a recipient of the 2012 SIUE Distinguished Service Award. I'm going to tell them about you. An investigative reporter for the Sarasota Herald Tribune in Florida, Paige St. John was awarded the 2011 Pulitzer Prize for investigative reporting for a year-long series of stories exposing financial corruption and profiteering in Florida's multi-billion dollar property insurance market. Her work received top recognition in national and regional awards and resulted in changes in Florida's insurance regulation and the return of millions of dollars to policyholder accounts. Paige St. John earned a Bachelor of Science in Mass Communications from SIUE in 1986. As a student, she served as editor of the campus newspaper, The Elastal, and director of the mascot organization, the Cougar Guard. In 2011, she was inducted into the SIUE Alumni Hall of Fame. SIUE is pleased to present the Southern Illinois University Edwardsville Distinguished Service Award to Paige St. John for her outstanding contributions. Paige St. John, it is an honor to have you as our speaker for this ceremony. Congratulations. Hello. On the schedule in front of the Chancellor, it says insert commencement address here. <laughs> so I hope you'll bear with me because I'm a, a writer and not a public speaker. Um, and as a reporter, I put a great deal of research on what goes into a commencement address. And I was um, struck primarily by the similarity in, in the uh, messages on values, uh, many of the same values you heard expressed just now. Um, but perhaps this is a bit of a, of a unique way to, to say the same thing. A Chinese Zen master named So Zen was asked by a student, what is the most valuable thing in the world? And the master replied, the head of a dead cat. The student was confused. Why is the head of a dead cat the most valuable thing in the world? And So Zen replied, because no one can name its price. This is a very old Zen koan um, on differentiation. And my husband would be horrified. He's, he's a practicing uh, Buddhist that, that I have uh, given it here today because this, this koan is actually the subject of serious study and years of meditation for those seeking enlightenment. But before you come to a quick conclusion on its meaning, you might consider the point of view of the cat. So let's talk about what is priceless. One of my first memories in life was riding here with my mother to pick up my father from work. He was a laborer, part of the crew building the Lovejoy Library, and afterward we would cut asparagus growing in the field or hunt morel mushrooms in the spring. And probably was among uh, the, the vigilante locals who shot the helicopters that were surveying for the, to build the university in, in the beginning. Anyway, I enrolled here as a uh, teenager uh, as an exemplary student, I graduated from high school in three years, and it was my ambition to complete college in three um, with a degree in science, uh, majoring in biology. And it was then that SIUE started to teach me its priceless lessons. I joined the Cougar Guard and went from trainee to director. I joined the Alestal, and I went from writing the calendar to editing the newspaper. I played Dungeons and Dragons with the computer science geeks hunk out with the punk rockers in, East, in St. Louis, learned to play Renaissance instruments with the um, Pistorians, and someone in the Goshen taught me how to hammer out a blues progression on the piano. And as I went, I started to skip classes, then entire courses, until my spotless straight A record had turned into academic probation. I was by then probably the worst student on campus. 
and I washed out of the journalism program. I ran out of money. I slept under the desk at the Alastal, and I starved on an endless diet of ramen noodles. And at the end of six years, I dropped out of school. I returned to Chicago to find a job. I did not know this, but the truth is that I had already received from Sui, as we called it then, the head of the cat. That I needed the rest of the animal didn't become apparent to me for another three months when I was working in the classified ad department of a community shopper. And by the end of the summer, found myself moonlighting, writing news stories for the front page. I gave in to that passion, returned to Edwardsville. I begged to be readmitted to the journalism program, the best J school in the nation, and threw myself into my classwork with the same passion that I had squandered it in the preceding years. What is more valuable, the degree or the experience? There are 459 of you to receive a diploma today, most in the Bachelor's of Science, eight in music, three in liberal studies. You leave here with a diploma as young as 21. Who, who's getting out of here at 21? No hands? <laughs> there we are. And as old as 57. No hand there. What kind of world do you enter? High unemployment and a particularly rough road for new college graduates. For every four of you, two will land a job in your career field. One finds work that didn't require a diploma. And the fourth gets to go back home to mom and dad or back to school to wait out the recession. But this is also a time of incredible opportunity. While I was a student, a professor of mine in the science department rolled out a utility cart on which there was a large white box. It was the first personal computer created by Steve Jobs, another very bad college student. In his 2005 commencement at Stanford, Jobs told graduates his own college education didn't really begin until he dropped out, liberating him to stick around and take the classes he was really interested in, sparking the passions that would help him launch Apple 10 years later. The technological revolution that has changed journalism entirely um, is, is credited in, in part to Jobs, and it redefined the word media to include the word social. And that has done more to change the world, to accelerate it, in some ways destabilize it. It enables viral mass citizen movements like the Arab Spring uh, overseas and in our country, the Occupy movement, international cyber wars like the one now between the United States and China, and the new forms of censorship as world governments attempt to control and contain these powers. The impacts can also be as fleeting as Quicksilver. Charity group Invisible Children amassed 100 million page views in March to make African warlord Joseph Kony a household threat. But by April, this would-be international movement had evaporated from the attention span of young Americans. It's also opened up the doors to who can communicate. Information flood is now contaminated and polluted by opinion and propaganda, and that has dangerous consequences. A study found that viewers regularly exposed to the mix of news, opinion, and bias on Fox News Network actually knew less about the world and world events and were more misinformed than those who had not watched television at all. And so here is where your education starts anew. I trolled Facebook this week to read the posts of E! freshmen. They sounded like survivors on a thrill ride from Six Flags. Janice said, roller coaster experience. Jason, just have to make it through tomorrow. Andrea, thank you, God, for blessing me to make it through my first year. Um, but now, uh, as you leave, you start a new sort of freshman year. And uh, the advice, as I mentioned before, to most graduates at this point um, has little to do with your diplomas in hand and a great deal to the values that you picked up while here at SIU. Winston Churchill, and I'll, uh, um, I'm a reporter, so here I go, quoting, quoting folks. Winston Churchill in 1941, for instance, told graduates to never give in, never give in, never, 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 never. Steve Jobs in 2005 advocated free thinking, your time is limited, he said, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. 
Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. And he closed with a quote of his own from the back cover of the Whole Earth Catalog. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Russell Baker, who truly deserved a Pulitzer for his political his commentary, um, advocated that graduates listen to the crack of a tin roof buckling under the power of the sun, or a heart-stoppingly beautiful phrase for Mozart, or the voice of somebody now gone whom you loved, or sometime when you're talking up a storm so brilliant, so charming, that you can hardly believe how wonderful you are, Pause just a moment and listen to yourself. It's good for the soul to hear yourself as others hear you. And next time, maybe, just maybe, you will not talk so much, so loudly, so brilliantly, so charmingly, so utterly, shamelessly, foolishly. He, he was very good at, at adding insults in with his, his phrases. And uh, Bradley Whitford, who's nothing more than a Hollywood actor, uh, starred on the West Wing, though had these incredible remarks. You will inevitably make mistakes. Learn what you can and move on. And at the end of your days, you will be judged by your gallop, not your stumble. I think, I think that sums it up very well. There's also yourself. Uh, a Facebook poster by the name of His Darling Angel is graduating today. Quote, moving on to my next chapter, grad school and praying that a job opens up so I can do both. Thanking God, because without him I wouldn't have made it thanking my fam because Lord knows having him in my corner gave me the confidence to continue on. I leave you with just a few words of my own. You leave here not with us with diplomas, but with the skill to learn, to ask questions, to differentiate between fact and opinion, to value information over ignorance, and above all, to determine for yourself what is of value and what is priceless. I wish you well. Thank you, Ms. St. John, and um, congratulations on a well-deserved award for your distinguished service. Uh, I think um, it's very obvious that having the courage to follow your heart and your intuition and your passion into journalism has benefited us all, so thank you.